Good morning, everyone. My name is Jill Dunlop, and I'm proud to be here as a member of Provincial Parliament for Simcoe North and welcome you all here today. I'd like to thank Premier Ford for being here for this announcement. It's always a pleasure to have you here in Simcoe North. We added the extra snow today. I'd also like to welcome my colleagues, Peter Bethlen Falvey, Minister of Finance, and Monty McNaughton, Minister of Labour, Training and Skills Development. We are also joined by Steve Clark, Mayor of Aurelia, Harry Hughes, Mayor of Oro Medante, Doug Downey, MPP for Barrie Springwater Oro Medante. Thank you to Jamie Doherty and the team here at Aurelia Auto Truck and Recycling for welcoming our government here today. Aurelia Auto Truck and Recycling has worked hard and served our community for more than a decade. Our government will continue to be here to support you, the hardworking people of Simcoe North and all across this province. Our government wants to help everyone take part in the new opportunities that are being created every day, and we know that training plays a critical role in helping people achieve their full potential. We want to attract and retain the best talent in Ontario, but also right here at home, and I know today's announcement will achieve this. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome Premier Ford to the podium. Well, good, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here, and, and thanks, Joe, for that introduction. And I'm so pleased to be back in Aurelia with a great team here at Aurelia Auto and Truck Recyclers. These guys are the champs here. Where they've been, uh, been at the heart of the local economy since 2010, my friends, in the face of big challenges, our government has a plan for growing a stronger economy, an economy that works for everyone. It's a plan that will protect our progress in our fight against COVID-19, but it also looks beyond to the Ontario we want to build and the future we want for our kids and grandkids. It's a plan that will attract investment to create good jobs in our steel, auto, and manufacturing sectors. It's a plan that will unleash the economic potential of our North as we build up homegrown supply chains for electric vehicles and battery manufacturing right here in Ontario. To do so, Ontario needs more skilled workers. That's why our government is expanding jobs training. It's why we're encouraging more young people to enter the skilled trades while breaking down barriers that stop hardworking newcomers from finding good jobs because of unfair requirements for in-province experience. To attract and keep these workers, we're also investing in communities with better health care and stronger local infrastructure. That means saying yes to more modern hospitals and more ICU capacity. It means saying yes to building long-term care homes as we add thousands of nurses and personal support workers. It means saying yes to building roads and highways to meet the needs of a growing province, and it means yes to connecting communities with more public transit. It also means yes to increasing the housing supply so Ontarians can reach the dream, their dreams of home ownership for themselves and their families. Friends, it's all linked. Ontario's economy is a machine. If one part of that machine isn't working to its full potential, it holds all of us back. But when Ontario's firing on all cylinders, watch out. There's no other place anywhere in the entire world that you'd like to start a business, work, or raise a family. That's why, starting next spring, we'll be expanding Second Career to give more people a chance to access the training they help when they find, when they find great work. As part of our ironclad commitment to Ontario's workers, our government is determined to do whatever we can to help connect workers who lost their jobs due to the pandemic by providing the training they need to start new in-demand and well-paying careers, because there's no question that we have some of the best workers anywhere in the world right here in Ontario. And there's lots of jobs uh, that need to be filled everywhere I go in the province. People are saying they need to hire people. So that's great news. This will also continue as we see more businesses and more jobs coming to Ontario to take advantage of our open for business attitude and world-class labour force. Our government is committed to ensuring every hard-working Ontarian has the training and skills needed to do these jobs of the future. And we're already seeing the early success of this program. Since March 2021, when the Second Career Program was launched, it has helped thousands and thousands of people train for new careers and land new jobs. That's thousands of people who have used this program to improve their skills, learn new ones. 
and set out on their successful second careers because what this program provides is real help for those who need it. Workers can receive up to $28,000 to pay for their education and living expenses as they pursue training to start a new career. And to help with training expenses, we're also proposing to extend the Ontario Jobs Training Tax Credit. This would provide approximately $275 million in additional support to about 240,000 people to help Ontario workers continue to upgrade their skills. My friends, this is all part of our plan, our plan to stand behind our workers and ensure that nobody is left behind as we move forward and build Ontario into the greatest place in the entire world to live and work. Our province has come so far, we can't afford to go back to the politics of no. Instead, our government is saying yes, yes to building, yes to investing, and yes to growing. Friends, let's say yes to the better and brighter future that the people of Ontario deserve. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll pass it over to our Minister of Labour, Labour Monty McNaughton. Well, thank you uh, so much, Premier, and good morning, everyone. It's great to be back here in Orillia with uh, my colleagues, Minister Dunlop, uh, Beth and Falvey, and of course, her uh, Attorney General, Doug Downey. Our government is helping workers earn bigger paychecks for themselves but most importantly, for their families. Today's announcement is yet another step in how we're giving workers a hand up in building back a better and stronger Ontario. Today, there are over 300,000 jobs going unfilled across our province. For us to reach our full potential, we need everyone, no matter where they live, who they are, and what their background is, to reach theirs. And that's why I'm pleased to share how we're expanding our second career program. Our government is investing an additional $5 million so that more people on social assistance, freelancers, and gig workers, youth and newcomers, can get the training they need. Through Second Career, as the Premier mentioned, workers can receive up to $28,000 to pay for their education and living expenses as they pursue training to start a new career. Additional support is also available for applicants requiring disability-related supports, childcare, or accommodation near their training. We're helping our workers and businesses recover. We're making sure no worker is left behind. We're working for workers. Thank you. I'd now like to welcome my colleague and my friend, the Minister of Finance, Peter Bethenfalvy, to say a few words. Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you, Minister McNaughton. It's always a pleasure to join Premier Ford, Ministers Dunlop, Downey, and uh, I want to shout out to MPP Andrew uh, Kanjan as well. And we're here to talk about how our plan is working for workers. One of the biggest challenges our economy faces is the skills gap between workers and jobs. As the Premier said, there are thousands of jobs going unfilled across the province. Each and every one of these jobs represent an opportunity, an opportunity to build a new career, an opportunity to build a better life for yourself, for your family, and for your community. But our province has the lowest share of workers with an apprenticeship or trades credential at 4.5%, below the Canadian average of 10.5%. This presents a real risk to our economic recovery and to our prosperity. That's why in our 2021 Fall Economic Statement, Build Ontario, we announced investments in the workers who are the lifeblood of our economy, workers who deserve every opportunity to succeed. Les travailleuses et travailleurs qui méritent d'avoir la possibilité de réussir. We want Ontario workers in a race to the top, not a race to the bottom. Nous voulons que les travailleuses et travailleurs de l'Ontario puissent améliorer leur sort au lieu de voir leur situation se détériorer. If you are prepared to put in the work, time and efforts to learn skills to support your family, our government is prepared to put in the money and give you every opportunity to see it through. That's why, in addition to expanding the second career program, we are proposing to extend the Ontario Jobs Training Tax Credit to 2022 which provides up to $2,000 for 50% of eligible training expenses for workers to upgrade their skills. We want to make sure people from all walks of life have the opportunity
to get a good job and thrive. That's why we're investing in our workers, laying the foundation for our long-term prosperity and building the better and brighter future that the people of Ontario deserve. Thank you. We'll now take questions from the media. If they could please line up behind the microphone one at a time. It'll be one question and one follow-up, please. Premier Ford, welcome to Aurelia. Yeah, it's um, great to be sticking, here. Sticking on the job theme here, um, obviously in this area, hospitality, tourism, these restaurants, yep. they're hurting badly. We're hearing from these owners constantly. Mm -hmm. They can't fill their jobs. What can you guys do to help them? Well, we have to make sure we get more people uh, out there and, and filling the jobs. We, we know we're about 300,000 uh, people short. We've had uh, numerous discussions with the federal government, making sure that the, the immigration numbers uh, go up, and we, we need them up uh, drastically uh, to keep up with our, our GDP as, as well around the province. So really bringing new people in, and also people, I've, I've, I've said this numerous times, if you're a healthy mind, healthy body, uh, there's a job for you out there in every single sector. So please, um, if, if you're able, please look for, for gainful employment. There's still uh, a lot of people uh, that need to find gainful employment. And following up, while these restaurants also can't find people, they're also now going to have to raise their wages, which is good for the staff, obviously, but it's making the recovery effort for these restaurant owners more difficult. What's your response to those concerns? Yeah, well, I, I talked to numerous restaurant owners, and it goes back to what you said, and I asked them, you know, would you be willing to pay someone $15? And the majority of them laughed and said, $15, I'll pay them whatever it takes to get in here because I have my restaurant closed half the amount of time that it was before, and we need people. So I think that was a no-brainer, you know, from 14.35 to $15. And uh, let's, let's face it, that's, that's a beginning wage. It's, it's tough for anyone to survive on $15. This is an employee's market. I encourage people to go out there. Uh, increase their skills, find other jobs if they want to earn more money because there's never been a market like this uh, in many years. And it goes back to us creating the environment and the conditions for companies to thrive and prosper and grow. And every day I get an update from our Minister of Economic Development. And it's staggering the amount of companies that are expanding here and coming in from all over the world because we've created the environment for companies to come here because it's a world economy we're competing against everyone in the world and we have to create things that are more competitive than other regions around the world that's exactly what we've done we've cut over seven billion dollars of burden off the backs of small medium and large businesses and allows them to hire more people and reinvest into their people number one technology and equipment thank you thank you Good morning, Mr. Hi. Premier. How John Swartz from Sun Online Media. Uh, hi, John. Um, this is all fine and dandy to help people uh, retrain, and, and of course the, the uh, increase in minimum wage, but there's another factor involved here to help people in the province, and that's the cost of housing. Yeah. Rents are escalating, uh, housing prices are escalating. Um, is there anything that the province is planning to do to help working yes. people out in the province with regard to corporate ownership of uh, rental housing units who are taking advantage of existing law um, to boot residents to get new ones in at a higher rent than they would otherwise be able to do and uh, to control ownership. Yeah, well, first of all, I, I don't like uh, landlords kicking people out of their, their homes. That, that's, a, that's the first thing. But it all comes down to supply and demand. Everything else, uh, you, we could talk about everything but supply and demand and, and right now, um, we're working with the Minister of Municipal Housing, and we're, we're going to sit down with all the municipalities and ask them, what can the province do to speed up permits? And not all regions, and, we're, and by the way, we're going to start scoring the, the uh, local cities and towns to see how quickly it takes to permit. Believe it or not, folks, sometimes when, when they apply for a permit, it can take four to six years. Where in North America does it take four to six years? And not all jurisdictions, but the vast majority is just like going on a carousel. They loop you around, loop you around, and guess who's paying? The people are paying, the developer's not paying. So we need to sit down, work with the municipalities. They're the ones issuing the permits. And that goes back to MZOs too, municipal zoning orders. 
And in my opinion, that's one of the best tools. To, if someone wants to build a company, expand a company, and they want to put an addition on, where are you going to invest? Are you going to invest in a place that takes six years to get a permit or put an addition on your facility? Or are you going to invest in a place that takes six months? So we, we all have a responsibility, the province and municipalities. But uh, man, we, we got to uh, start cutting the permit times down big time and, and start getting uh, houses built as quickly as possible. Thank you. Hi, Mike. Um, related to this, um, yes. in, ter in terms of your efforts to try to you know, make housing more affordable and encourage developers to build, um, you know, we found out uh, recently about a developer nearby here in Barrie, uh, a whole bunch of people signed pre-construction pre contracts, and the developer has just come back to them and said, you've got to pay $100,000 more. That's yeah, ridiculous. Nothing burns me up more than that. Some developer just trying to make extra money off the backs of hardworking people, unacceptable. Another group did that once, once before, if I'm not mistaken, with some condos, right? They see the market going up, and all of a sudden they pull back their contracts. It's ridiculous. I'll, I'll have to look into that because it's unacceptable in my mind. All you're doing is targeting hardworking people. As simple, simple as that. If they have a contract and they've signed a contract, and it's no fault of their own that the prices have gone up in lumber, that's, that's a cost of doing business for the developer. Believe me, my, I, I'm not shedding tears for developers. They're doing pretty good right now. Who I'm shedding tears for, the people that can't afford a house, can't afford uh, to buy a condo, uh, that, that's, who, that's who I feel sorry for. So the developers out there, don't pull, pull those stunts on us. I'll, I'll tell you that right now. It's unacceptable. Sorry, Premier, you were so passionate about it that I didn't actually ask the question. <laughs> yeah, but it just burns me up because it's happened before. The developers, stop playing your games. You sign a contract, you better damn that, build that damn house at that price because we aren't going to let you off. Simple as that. But the question is, you're, you're, under the law, your government allows this to happen. Well, so I'm, what's the government going to do? You know something? We're going to address this because it's totally unfair. You sign an agreement, like anything. You go into a store, they're out of stock, you sign an agreement. If they get the, the goods three, four, five months later, you have to pay that price. You can't play these games with people's lives. You know, there's so many people that get their family to pitch in, their parents to pitch in. They've saved for a couple of years to put a down payment, and all of a sudden, bang, the carpet gets pulled out from underneath them. It's unacceptable. So we'll, we'll address that, Mike. Thanks, Premier. Thank uh, the other question I wanted to ask you, oh, and I forgot to mention, uh, I heard it was your birthday on the weekend. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm getting to be an old man. Jeez, like, 57. Likewise. likewise. That's right. um, so uh, another story we have uh, today is uh, about uh, some employees of the Ontario College of Trades, since we're here talking about yeah. the skilled trades, uh, who have been given layoff notices. And, you know, I spoke to them. Uh, these are hardworking folks who yep. said they trusted you when you said no public sector workers would lose their jobs. Uh, what do you say to them uh, today, yep. given that they've they've got layoff notices well, and are out of, are those, at the those, end of the job? Those same inspectors, and I'm going to pass this over to uh, Minister of Labour in a second, but those same inspectors can be rehired. They can apply for I think it's 70 or 90 positions that were. We're hiring new inspectors. The, the College of Trades was a disaster, in my opinion. And uh, I'll pass it over to, to Monty here. Well, thanks, Mike. Um, uh, as you know, we've moved forward to hire 100 new um, health and safety inspectors at our uh, ministry. Um, the, the, the Liberals' uh, OCOT system was a complete failure. I mean, a 40% decrease in apprenticeship registrations at a time when we have uh, we're in the need for 700,000 skilled tradespeople uh, by 2028. Uh, so we're moving forward with um, winding down OCOP at the end of the year, launching Skilled Trades Ontario. We'll have an, 100 new uh, inspectors, which will be the largest amount in uh, provincial history. Hey, Jamie. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Premier. Uh, this question comes from Richard Southern. City News reported on Friday that the vac vaccine booking system may have been hacked. We have spoken to a number of people that were spammed after they made bookings on it. Is there an investigation into this uh, possible? Yeah, there is. There's an OPP investigation. Uh, I think it's limited uh, on the briefing I've, I've received over, over the weekend. 
But cybersecurity is, is so important, you know, and it's, it, it, I'll be very frank, it's way above probably all our heads right here. They're getting more technical, more sophisticated every single day, and they've been hacking into all, all sorts of, I talked to the Premier of Newfoundland, and they hacked, as you know, hacked into the health system there. I've had a conversation with my Chief of Staff, with the uh, Principal Secretary and Secretary of Cabinet, and uh, they have all hands on deck on all our ministries, especially our Ministry of Health. And I'm, I'm confident with, uh, with the group that we have down there. They'll, they'll look into it, and the OPP have all the confidence in the world. They'll, they'll get down to the bottom of it. And uh, an MPP, or MPP that was once been part of your caucus has tested positive for COVID. Is there contact tracing happening in the House right now? with the, uh, the MPPs that were sitting last You know, some, uh, you'd have to talk to the speaker about that. He, he's the one that uh, runs runs Queen's Park. So uh, that's news to me. I just I just heard about it right now. So uh, the person that, and, and they aren't vaccinated? I'm not sure they're okay. vaccinated. So well, they, they anyone who problem. catches it, I wish them all the best. I, I really do. Okay. Thank Vaxxed you. or unvaxxed. Last question. Hi, right, morning, yeah. Premier. Um, from, from Matt Bigley, our global news reporter at Queen's Park. Uh, yeah. You promised to restore the Auditor, Auditor General's powers over government advertising, but now your government isn't. Are, are you breaking your promise here? Well, I wouldn't say we're, we're breaking our promise. We have a good relationship with our Auditor General. It's ironic you, you asked that question. I had a, a lengthy conversation last night on the phone with the Auditor General, and, and uh, we, we look, to, uh, look forward to working with her. What I did say, I, I really want the Auditor General is focus value for money as as my brother rob did we had a great relationship with the city of toronto uh, i need her help to look at waste in the government the government's a massive massive machine and our minister ministers are constantly looking for efficiencies to drive efficiencies looking for waste but we we need the auditor general to get in there deep and, and find duplication, waste, value for money. That's her job. I look forward to working with her and uh, making sure we, we drive a, more efficiencies for the, for the province. But uh, that's it. Thank you. Thank, yeah. thank you, everyone. And again, it's great to be here in Norilia. I gotta tell you folks, you have an incredible team. Uh, no matter if it's Andrea Kanjan or Doug Downey or Jill Dunlop or, or Caroline uh, Mulrooney, and uh, you just have an absolute all-star team uh, right here in this region, and you're well represented down at Queen's Park. So thank you, and God bless everyone. <laughs>